Good evening. Welcome to Emmanuel Assembly of God. My name is Pastor Ken, and tonight we're going to continue our lesson series on the Sermon on the Mount. And we are in Matthew chapter 5, and we are going to be looking at verse number 38. And if you want to open your Bible, the theme tonight will be love your enemies. So get your Bible and get your notes. If you want to see the notes, you click on the notes in the lower left-hand corner and a section will pop up. And get your, maybe a glass of water, your coffee. Let's get ready. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Now, let's look at these uh, verses um, you have heard it was said, eye for an eye and tooth for tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. So question number one has to do with the real test of our faith, and that is how do we treat our enemies? It's, <laughs> it's easy to be nice to those who are nice to us, right? Someone that are friendly, it's nice, easy to be friendly. Some people are rude, it's a little, you know, they're about as warm and fuzzy as a porcupine, right? The difficulty arises in dealing with those who are unkind. Now, when we're talking about enemies, enemies may once have been friends, and something happened that that friendship has evaporated. Enemies may have always been enemies. So this lesson leaves the door open for friendship. It leaves the door open for reconciliation. And this is probably the big theme of our lesson this evening, is that we want to be reconciled to as many people as possible. Now question number two, Jesus quotes the Old Testament law, an eye for an eye, and that's in Exodus chapter 21. This was a guide to Old Testament judges on how to deal with issues. Now remember in the Old Testament there was no police protection. They couldn't pick up the telephone and dial 911 and say, help, I'm on such and such a street. Send the police now. There was no one there. So the rule of the land was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Now that put everyone on notice. With the same measure that you give, you will receive. And so if someone was going to break into your house and steal something, when they were caught, they would have to give that something back, plus the value of whatever they stole. So if they stole something worth $100, not only did they have to give you back the $100, they had to give you an additional 100. So it was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And it also let people know that if you're going to uh, be violent, if you're going to steal, if you're going to break in, that there was going to be uh, probably a swift judgment. And uh, so it sort of kept people at bay to do the right thing. Now, obviously, not everyone but for the most part. It also set boundaries for revenge. In other words, uh, in their day, if something happened and you put somebody's eye out, boy, this sounds 
harsh today, but if you put somebody's eye out back then, your eye was going to be put out. But it set boundaries. In other words, uh, the, the revenge or the payment uh, couldn't be excessive. And so uh, it set limitations. And so Jesus is letting them know, you have heard uh, what the Old Testament judges guide was. Now, question number three, this was instructions to the court. But the Pharisees had applied it to personal relationships. They were extracting their own justice on each other. In other words, they, they were not taking the, the law uh, to the law, to the courts, and getting justice there. Immediately, they were, you know, like a vigilante. We cannot take the law into our own hands. And it always creates a problem when we apply Scripture incorrectly. Now, we may think we know all the facts in a situation. And there may be extenuating circumstances that we have no knowledge of. And so that's one of the things that's important for the courts to sort all these things out. Maybe today when we hear things happen, maybe we do need to take a deep breath because there may be something that we're not uh, seeing or maybe we don't know all of the facts. Now, Jesus gives, question number four, Jesus gives three examples that were used as guides in his day. And uh, the first thing we're going to look at is they were to turn the other cheek. Now, when Jesus said that they were to turn the other cheek, Jesus was not saying that we are to take abuse. He was not saying that it's okay for people to beat you up. He was not saying that that's okay for, that you should uh, be okay with people hurting you. He was not saying it's okay for you to keep taking abuse. Jesus was talking counterculture in his day. So if we look at turning the other cheek, if you were struck on the cheek, when you turn struck on the right cheek, how are you going to get struck on the right cheek? Well, most people would have been right-handed. So if they hit you, they would have slapped or hit your left cheek. Okay, so in order to hit the right cheek, uh, it would have to be a, a backhand. And that means, and to be struck in a backhanded way, that was uh, not only violence, but it was an insult. And so uh, Jesus was saying to them that violence is not the only way to handle the situation. Now, Obviously, um, we'll talk a little bit more about that in, in a later question uh, about violence. Uh, Jesus is never saying it's okay for uh, you to be beat up, abused, uh, whether it's physically, emotionally. It, Jesus is saying that's, he said that's never okay and that you should never have to put up with that. But he is saying that. Uh, violence is not the only way to handle uh, violence. Trading blows and trading insults, it just keeps it going. It just, you know, that expression of stirring the pot. Uh, now, turning the other cheek is really a brave move. It's not simply holding your cheek out. You know, you hit me here. Okay, hit me on the other one. Uh, no. Holding your cheek out to be slapped, it's, it's not simply that. It's saying, and maybe you physically do say this, okay? You will not abuse me. It is standing your ground. It's communicating, you will not belittle me. It is stating that you can't take my dignity. Now, it's really, it's a really a call for strength to look there in the eye. Anything else you want to say to me? 
Now, how do we turn the other cheek? I heard someone say one time, yeah, well, I'll turn the other cheek, but if you hit me again, I won't. No. How to turn the other cheek? Uh, one of the ways to turn the other cheek is to simply not respond. Period. You can't play ping pong with a curtain. You hit the ball up against the curtain, and what happens? The ball just falls. Okay, don't respond. A another way to turn the other cheek is to name what is happening. You know, it's okay to say, that was rude. Anything more where that came from? Is that all? And sometimes the other person may hurl other insults upon you. Just let it, oh, anything else? Let it go. Come on, is that all? Uh, another way to handle it is clarify the, clarify the choice they are making. It's okay to say, is that really how you want to talk to me? Now, this is different than saying, don't talk to me that way. See, when we say, don't talk to me that way, when we've been insulted, what we are doing is we're keeping it going. And so when we say, don't talk to me that way, the other person can respond right back and I'll talk to you any way that I want. But when you ask a question, it, they're not ready for that. And they have to think about what you said. And in the thinking about that, is that really how you want to talk to me? Making a question makes them think. And it also lets them know that you're not standing for it. And it's okay when you say that to have a little attitude in your voice. Is that the way you want to talk to me? Okay. You know, you're letting them know that you're not standing for their bullying. You can state your intention. In other words, you say, I am, I am going to do that whether you want me to do that or not. I am going to do that. And they may spout off. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Oh, okay. And again, I am going to do this, or I am not going to do that. Now, in this, I just understand this. You don't need the other person to understand you. You don't need them to understand what they have done or how that it has hurt you. And I know we want people to understand what we are feeling, but you don't need you don't need that. You don't need their apology. Now, it would be nice if they did understand. It would be nice if they did apologize. But you need to stand up for yourself. You need to turn the other cheek and take a stand. I'm not putting up with that anymore. Jesus said, I'm sending you out as sheep among the wolves. And he told us to be as shrewd as a serpent, but harmless as doves. So sometimes we have to take a stand like this. And he also said that they were to give their shirt as well as their coat when they were sued. In the Old Testament, you were not allowed to take a man's cloak or his coat, his outer garment. That was his covering. That was just protection. That was his warmth at night. Uh, it served as a tent. You know, it, it was his protection. And they were not allowed to take it. You know, uh, if, if someone wanted to give it to you as a surety that, okay, I'm going to uh, lend me $2 and I'll, give you, I'll pay you back tonight. Well, even if the person couldn't pay them back that night, they had to give the coat back. If they were taken to court, they could not take their coat. They could take their shirt, okay? They could take their, their shirt, which was worn next to the skin. They, they could take that. They could sue for that. But they were not allowed to uh, take the coat. And so Jesus was saying to them, change the way 
that you look at possessions. Your cloak, your coat is your, you know, that's all you have. That's a, that's a very important possession. He was also saying, you know, you're suing me for my shirt and I will gladly part with that which you have no legal claim to. It sets the other person a little bit back on, on their heels that they don't understand that. I mean, possessions are just stuff. It's just things. So we need to be careful that we're not too quick to sue for every little personal wrong. You ever hear people say, I'll sue! Jesus is saying, you know, take a break. And then he said, they were to go the extra mile. It was an insult to have your cheek slapped. And authority figures, the soldiers, Roman soldiers, could command those beneath them. They could take anybody on the street and they could say, hey, you, I want you to carry my backpack for me. And they could... Uh, they were they had to carry it uh, I don't know the scripture says that a mile but it it was a, a prescribed distance and uh, so Jesus was saying that if someone asks you to carry it one mile then carry it two miles uh, the point was go the extra mile and Jesus was encouraging us in all of these things to make peace with our enemies. Question number five, Jesus told them of their righteousness needed to exceed the teachers of the law and the Pharisees. Now, ironically, their righteousness could never exceed that of the, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees. The only way to become righteous would be to admit that we are sinners and put our faith in Christ. Our Ultimately, our response to turning the other cheek and giving our coat and the going the extra mile is, I can't do it. In and of myself, I can't do these extra things that are, that are being asked of me. I can't do it. However, if we follow the law of love in Christ, we can do more than these admonitions. And people will see our good deeds and glorify the Lord. So these things are not easy to do. It is our natural inclination to hit back when we are hit. You know, when we get shoved, we want to shove back. It's not as natural to try to get out of a debt we owe. It's natural to be to resent being forced. To do something and oh when Jesus said go the extra mile in his day all oh, the Jews hated it oh they 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 loathed it they they were so upset that the Romans by Roman law they could do this and oh they, they they resented it so much but Jesus is telling us if we want to win them to Christ we must love people where they are not where we want them to be Remember we've said, does it surprise us when sinners sin? No. Does it surprise us when they don't think like Christians? No. This means to be friendly, even when they are our enemy. Now, question number seven. Obviously, Jesus is not talking about violent events. He's not talking about how to run a country. He, ad he is addressing things that we have control over. We need to be kind and compassionate to those that we deal with. Now, he does not intend for you to be a doormat for abuse. It is a real problem, however, when we try to apply scripture over something that it was never intended to cover. And so we need to let the light of Christ shine through us and help us to be strong and to do the right thing. Many of these things that Jesus is talking about here, it just, as we said, it just keeps the argument or keeps the situation going. And Jesus is saying, no, we don't want to keep it going. 
So how might we be kind to our enemies? We don't have to keep trading insults. We don't have to keep fighting. We may have compassion for what they are going through. We may learn about them. We may discover something. We may think how we would like to be treated. See, they were being taught it's okay to take the law into their own hands. And Jesus was saying, hold on, wait. That's not what the law of Christ, that's not what our Heavenly Father wants us to do. So think of the impact on people when they are shown kindness. They may have expected a severe rebuke. You may, be, you may win them over to be your friend. It's easy to write people off. I'm sure you have heard people say, oh, they always, or they will never, okay? It's real easy to fall into a, a habit or, or take for granted or write people off. So that's easy. Reconciliation must begin somewhere. And Jesus was saying, it begins with his disciples. And that begins with you and me today. Amen. Well, I'm glad that you stopped by tonight. Uh, let's close our session in a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we know that following you is not easy. And just like Jesus said, except your righteousness exceed that of the teachers of the law and the Pharisees, we won't be able to enter into heaven. And Lord, and in myself, my I can't. My righteousness is just not there. And so, Lord, I need your strength. I need your help. And Lord, you said, call upon me, and I will hear and answer you. Lord, I pray today for those that are sick. Lord, you know the ones that need a touch in body, especially those that are battling this virus. I pray, Lord, you would be with them and strengthen them, help them to feel better real soon, we pray. We ask, Lord, you would watch over each one of us, continue to meet our needs day by day. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We hope to see you here on Saturday for Saturday School. God bless.